The variance reduction technique is very useful for reinforcement learning as well. So I want to introduce a policy gradient method and uh, its gradient uh, is a variance reduction technique. So basically, in reinforcement learning scenario, there are many methods that find a nice policy for your setting. And the policy gradient method is one of very popular methods in reinforcement learning. And so, as in the name, the policy gradient method use gradient. And because it is very difficult to compute the exact gradient at every time, uh, again, we have to estimate the gradient using some random sampling. And the random sampling usually has high variance, and the high variance uh, make your conversions very bad, learning very difficult. So again, for reinforcement learning with policy gradient, we have to introduce some nice technique that can reduce the variance. Okay. So, what is policy gradient? In reinforcement learning, we basically observe some history. Sorry. History, or uh, it is called trajectory. The trajectory include all the information, state at time zero, action you take at time zero, and reward you get at time zero, state at time one, action at time 1, reward at time 1, and so on, up to state at time t-1, action at t-1, uh, reward at capital T-1, and the end state as capital T. The Polish usually controlled by a parameter, zeta, and this policy control the action property action behavior. So the policy pi zeta define the, the distribution of action A for given state SI. And the SI is um, decided by some predefined transition prob probability. So the probability of SI is defined by SI minus 1 and AI minus 1 conditioned uh, transition property. So when you are at uh, state SI minus 1 and when you do action at AI minus 1, then with probability PSI given SI minus 1, AI minus 1, you go to state SI. This is not depend on, this does not depend on Polish parameter set up. And the Polish only control the action prob probability. Okay. And the goal of um, the reinforcement learning is of course, maximize your total reward. So maximize your expected reward from time zero to Capital T minus 1 with this counting factor gamma. You want to maximize the summation gamma per T times the reward. This is R. Sorry. This is uh, oh, uh, it looks very same. Anyway. So you want to um, maximize uh, this expectation. Okay. So gradient descent rule, uh, of course, here we want to maximize the reward. So gradient ascent rule have to compute gradient. We have to gradient with respect to theta of the expectation of the total, total reward. 
So this reverse course summation. Let's say gamma equal to one. Summation t zero to get the t minus one r t. We want to uh, maximize this. So every time we take the gradient with respect to theta and uh, change the or update the parameter theta to the gradient direction. Okay. Then how can we compute this gradient? This is not easy to compute. Right? Because this theta control the transition behavior. And it is very, very difficult to take the gradient. So in uh, Polish gradient, we usually use this trick. When you take the gradient for the expectation of some function fx, because the expectation definition is this, p theta x fx dx, This is equal to a gradient of p theta x fx dx. In general, this is hard to compute, and even the uh, gradient, integral of this gradient, is extremely difficult to uh, compute. Okay, so we use this trick. Replace this simple gradient by probability times gradient of log p set x. Then from the property of gradient of log function, this part is equal to gradient of p set x over p set x. And cancel it out, you have the original integral form. So why we have to uh, this new form? Why we have to have this new form? And is it really uh, make the computation easier than before? The answer is yes with Monte Carlo sampling approach. So basically this is equal to expectation of fx Gradient of theta log p theta x uh, We can estimate this expectation by sampling, random sampling to take the x value, I uh, take the yes, take the x value from the p theta distribution and then just uh, compute the empirical average, then the empirical average is usually unbiased, unbiased estimator of this, the unbiased estimator of this gradient. So using the unbiased estimator of a gradient, you can learn stochastic gradient descent, or here, stochastic gradient of ascent rule, and then you can convert it to the solution when the variance of stochastic gradient is very small. But the problem here is usually the gradient of this and the estimation of this is um, has very high variance. We usually have very high variance because uh, this sampling rule has very diverse trajectory and this uh, function, the gradient of rogue p set x also has very, you know, <coughs> large uh, value range. So the gradient ascent rule as follow. We update theta using this um, gradient ascent rule the episode or trajectory comes from our policy pi theta and we want to maximize the total reward and here this gradient is 
computed like this. And the problem is the variance of this part is too high. Okay, so to reduce the variance, basically from the definition of R tau, we just need to take the gradient. T. This is equal to expectation of tau comes from pi theta summation t zero to the t minus one R t prime and the R t prime because R t prime just depend on the update up to time t prime that is equal to t zero to t prime gradient theta log pi theta atst and that is equal to pi expectation of tau comes from pi theta t is equal to kept t minus 1 gradient of log pi theta atst summation t prime equal to t2 the t minus 1 r t prime this equality comes from the you know when you have two summation you can change the the location of i and j and then when you rearrange the summation term you can easily obtain this term from the previous. Okay, you can easily obtain this. So please try yourself. And if you have any question, then please post your question to our Discord channel or KLMS Q and A board. Okay. So still, this um, expectation we have to. Um, estimate this expectation using Monte Carlo simulations. So using some Monte Carlo sampling, we have to estimate this expectation by empirical average. And this empirical average has very high variance. So to get accurate expectation, we have to learn very wrong simulation very wrong Monte Carlo simulation. This takes a lot of time and we don't want to that much computation for estimating one single expectation of gradient. Okay, so for this, in general, Polish gradient method introduce some reference function BST. And very interestingly, any reference function BST can make unbiased estimator. More precisely, we will use this expectation that comes from pi theta, a motion t0, capital t minus 1, gradient of theta, root pi theta, a t, even as t, times summation t prime equal to t to the capital T minus 1 r t prime minus b s t okay and this subtraction can make this estimation more stable can reduce the variance of this random variable first why this does not introduce any bias Expectation of gradient theta log pi theta 
a t given as t times b s t this is equal to expectation this is for total trajectory expectation of s from 0 time to time t a from 0 time to t minus 1 expectation of s t plus 1 time to capital t a t times 2 capital t minus 1 gradient of theta log pi theta a t given as t times b as t for given s0 to t a through to t minus 1 okay is good right and here bst is constant because s0 to t is given right so this is equal to 0 to t a 0 to t minus 1 b s t times expectation same same except this under the same condition okay and here interestingly gradient of theta log pi theta a t given as t this is equal to pi theta a t given as t gradient of theta pi theta a t s t right so when you take expectation here this is equal to integral gradient of theta pi theta a t s t for different a t Okay. And since we know that the sum of probability equal to 1, so that is just constant, so the gradient of this is equal to 0. So basically, this is equal to gradient of 1. That is equal to 0. So any function BST is okay. That does not change unbiased property so if we pick bst very nicely then we can just simply reduce the variance and we usually use value function value function of state and that is very nice estimator of this total sum of reward from the current time slot up to the end of history and the period 